guys, it's Dr. Patrick Price and welcome to The Body Detective Show. And uh, today we have a great show with you today. We have Luis Perez, a very good friend of mine, a very wonderful martial artist, and today we're going to hear his story. So stick with us today and for the program, we're talking about martial art and fitness today. So my good friend Luis, we're going to let him give us a nice background about himself, guys. So Luis, all yours, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, Luis Perez, pleasure. I, I'm a judoka by, by choice. I born and raised in Puerto Rico. That's where I started my martial arts voyage. I've trained in karate, Muay Thai, uh, wrestling, a little bit of boxing. Um, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu uh, is my current art. I have a uh, black belt in judo. I have a, a, a brown belt in Jiu Jitsu. Started Jiu Jitsu in Houston because of the lack of uh, judo, away. I was in Florida in Miami when I first. <laughs> right, right. There's not a lot of that. It's um, when, when did you start judo? What? Very interesting. I um, I was in elementary school and a very small uh, school, private school, and we had a one of the main judo teachers come twice a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays, after class as part of the extracurricular activities. Is that part of the school system? Uh, of, of our school, yes. Wow. So two days a week he taught us, you know, mama wadu kemis, forward, side, uh, forward rolls, side falls, ipon uh, sewinagi o sotogari, ogoshi, just a simple judo techniques and uh, how to sit, how to stand, all the, uh, the, the, the basic of judo. Around that time, Karate Kid comes out. Karate Kid. <laughs> I, had, I had two cousins that were uh, Shotokan practitioners, black belts, and state champs. Um, they were older than me. They are older than me. And I started training with them on the weekends. I did that for about a year, but kept doing judo uh, during the week at school. Um, at nights, I would play basketball, so it, it was, I was little sport billy there doing mm -hmm. all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. I stopped judo when I went to high school because uh, I got a scholarship for, for sports. Um, uh, well, not a scholarship, but <laughs> they allowed me to stay in school mm -hmm. because I was good in sports because I was really uh, not a good not a good student. I had good grades, but my behavior wasn't the best. The sports were the best thing. To do, yeah. Right? So yeah. I, I, I think most guys can relate that. Though, but sometimes <laughs> school, if you're not, not an educated person as far as a scholar, right? Yeah, sports is why you're in school. Yes. I live yes. for PE, right? Yeah. I, 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 it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's like eating, eating your dinner so that you get dessert. Right. So I would, I would go through school so I could play ball, you know? Okay. So that's how it worked out, and um, I always kept doing judo a little bit. On so so how old were you about when you started introducing to judo? I was seven. Seven or eight like around there. Yeah, yeah. Seven or eight, and um, um, it was about ten of us, all, all, all boys. And so yeah. Kodokan, no Kodokan judo, right? Yeah, it's traditional. So Mr. Uh, Julio Clemente, Sensei Julio Clemente, uh, became, uh, he was uh, uh, one of the prominent dojo owners in, 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 in Puerto Rico. He became an Olympic uh, judge, and, and he went, I think, Barcelona in 92, and, and, and what was it, Atlanta, 96? So he was... Um, an Olympic judge in, in those two Olympics and, and many other international um, tournaments. So, so did, did you don't really uh, stand out well during that era for as far as the country? You know, you said so it's still, judo is pretty big in Puerto Rico. It's kind of like, a, it's mm -hmm. it's interesting because we're known for, for baseball and boxing, mm -hmm. but judo is huge in Puerto Rico as far as uh, uh, community, right? Mm -hmm. And and we've had many olympic uh, uh, athletes for as small as puerto rico is it we've we've produced good judokas and and hopefully we continue to um so yeah it's 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 one of those things that y you don't know until you either meet somebody that does it and introduces to uh, you to it or or you're born into the family either by by a cousin, uh, mm -hmm. an uncle, or your your father or mother. Are so let so me ask you a question. So yeah. like, a lot of kids, as far as when I got in, I was right doing high school time, 
is you're wondering like I don't know if you were doing the Bruce Lee era like watch Bruce Lee. Oh, like of course, is, so everybody does. Everybody they, does. They, some martial they, arts. You know, they, they asked me the question school. Yo, what do you want to be, Johnny? When you grow up, a fireman, a policeman? I said I want to be Bruce Lee. <laughs> and the teacher looked at me. Go, Bruce Lee? Like, yeah, I want to be Bruce Lee. And that was my that was my answer. So, and when you start judo, like I started in Japanese jiu-jitsu. That's my mm -hmm. first start. Mm -hmm. So did you get to a point in training judo, like, when do we kick in the head? And your teacher's going, well, we don't kick to the head in judo. Did you have that kind of a so, question for your teacher at that time? So because I was training uh, with my cousins on the weekends, uh, we, were, we were doing shotokan, so there was a lot of striking and blocks. And so stuff. you know the difference between the two? Uh, absolutely. So I understood the, 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 the difference, and, and, and that showed me that it's not just one thing here. There's, there's so many more. And then the Bruce Lee factor there too that he's a, he was a cross trainer from the get go after after his injury you know he became a cross trainer, right. and and that's the Bruce Lee that that I that I knew I didn't know him, you know just from the movies but everything else and and he wasn't just a traditional art he kind of brought in so many things to to make so his even better unique. yeah because mm -hmm. he was he was one of the first guys actually publicly. That was bringing different systems together where mm -hmm. even the Chinese community, we know about Bruce Lee, yeah. kind of uh, shunned him in a way because he was mixing the arts. Yes. And during your era and my era, that was still happening in the yes. schools. You didn't, you didn't mix the arts. Well, look yeah. at you know what what the UFC did in the beginning. For example, uh, it was they, they 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 pitted a wrestler against uh, a boxer and a and a, and a sabate against a, a a sumo wrestler. You know. Mm -hmm. This is what he does, this is what this other guy does, and put them together and see which is the best art. So how were the teachers about that growing up as far as knowing if you train in some, some karate art versus judo, were the teachers kind of shunning it also, your kids, or were they So I, 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 didn't, I didn't, I don't remember sharing that with my teachers that I was doing one or the other. I did share it with my friends because you would go back to school and you would show what you learned on the weekend or what you learned in the afternoon the next day, you know, and, we used to fight a lot. Back in the day, you, you could fight in school and it was okay, you were still friends, you know, you beat each other up and then like, all right, let's, I'll, I'll, I'll buy you a high C, a little tang. It's kind of what you did back then. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So, so let me ask you, so as far as your background starting judo, then introducing to the, the karate arts, is, a, is looking back to even to this day, what is it that you love so much about martial arts in general? What is it that that's still holds you even to this day? It became a healthy addiction, a painful one, but <laughs> but healthy. Um, it it's shown me what what number one what your body can and cannot do, and how how to strive to become better every day, um, and not just a one thing, not not just a throwing people and submitting people, but you as a person, because you realize that there's somebody, there's always another level to everything. And you want to reach that, and and that permeates through life, right? Uh, um, and any martial artist can tell you that. So so reach so like besides just sports, it reached a deeper side of you in some way. Absolutely, right? absolutely. It, it judo, for example, um, you bow in to get in the mat. The mat becomes a temple, the house, your a, a family, your sanctuary. Correct, mm -hmm. and. You respect your 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 partners, your friends, your coworkers. They 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 all represent that in life. Your teacher become it, it's it's your father. It's it's your boss. It's it. so so the aspect of the training, the traditional way, mm -hmm. when you were bowing and showing respect. You felt like that extended also outside the dojo as well. Absolutely, you 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 see what respect. You learn more. Your family teaches you about respect, but when but when you get slapped by your by your sensei, it's a different kind of teaching, and you understand what respect not by violence, not by by force, but just straight respect, and and it and it goes back. You take that home. You take that everywhere you go. It's not when you're an engineer, you engineer stuff at work, but when you're no mar when you're a martial artist, you're a martial art martial artist. So 
24 seven. So, so does that aspect go when you're buying clothes? Do you, do you go to the, like when you buy your blue jeans, can I throw a kick in these jeans? Do you think you, about that when you're buying your shoes, shoes your pants, your shirts? Pants, you move? absolutely. Um, uh, I, Those of you out there in martial arts <laughs> will understand this. <laughs> yeah, you, you, know, you, need, you need to be able to wear clothes that, that allow you movement. And, and, and it comes with a, a gi. It's, it's loose fitting. The, the judo gi is, is a lot more uh, loose fitted than, than, a, than a, a Brazilian jiu jitsu gi, yes. But, but still, it allows you for movement and allows you for flexibility. And, and, and you think about those things. You still want to look good, of course, but right. you, you want that functionality in your clothing. And now you so. got all these pants are made with the, the stretchy pants. Which all is amazing. Even jeans. Moved. They needed these pants Even like jeans. back in the 80s. You know? Even jeans. They, they, where those were they when jeans. we were growing up? Yeah. I had those old Wranglers. You go, oh, and man. And yes. almost cut my circulation off and threw a <laughs> kip, right? <laughs> you grew up in the country, didn't yes, you? Yes, I did. <laughs> Very small town. Yes. But hey. Okay, let's, let's move on to... Now, I think it even that back then to now, what what do you enjoy when you're training? Everybody has an aspect they like stand up on the ground, weapons. What do you what do you really enjoy doing in the martial arts? What's your thing? Um, I've I've learned a lot from a lot of people. I my kicks still suck, even with all the Chotokan that I did. My kicks still suck. So I, I enjoy Boxing, the, the the boxing aspect, and, and the wrestling, and the judo, and the, the jiu jitsu part of martial arts, which is what I have experienced on. I would like to learn. So, so the ground game is, a, is your thing. The throws, the grounds, the striking. Yes, um, it, it's it, it flows. I I feel more comfortable with it, and as I've gotten older, the sport aspect of it has has dissipated, and it's become more of a the the growth as, as a person becoming a becoming better at each technique uh, in, instead of just uh, thinking about points uh, for example in jiu-jitsu uh, a knee ride you get the four points and all these things I, I, I'm, I'm trying to find first what works for me at my age and, and, and number two what what is functional and what makes what makes sense in, in real life. Mm -hmm. And guys, he, he's being very humble to us because I've known Luis for a while. And this man, when you watch him in his grappling sessions, some guys grapple with strength and power. He has that, but he's he's like water. He just flows and oozes into each movement. And I know he's going to be very humble about that, but he's, he's an excellent ground fighter. And we used to have him come to our school and, and just teach a little bit of stuff. And just the basics for him, people are still kind of scratching their head like, okay, he made that look really easy. Why can't we do it? And so, so I know for sure it's, a, it's in the ground area. Uh, this definitely is a forte of his. And so where do you feel like uh, you got your strength? Would you say your judo foundation really helped you with your ground game? I owe, I owe, it, I owe, it, all, I owe it all to judo. Um, judo first, right? Yeah, 100%. Mm -hmm. 100%. So, so how do you feel today when people look at uh, Brazilian judo? And this is not to bash any artist. When people kind of take away the flame that the judo set the foundation before the Brazilian jiu -jitsu. How do you How do you answer those type of uh, conflicts? History, man. Mm -hmm. Uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu wouldn't exist had a Japanese master had not come to Brazil. That's that's the beginning of it. A small man chose to redesign Jiu-Jitsu so that it worked his, his his body type and opened the door for many others. Kudos to him. I I, I freaking love it. I still practice it to every day to to this day. But none of this would would exist had it not been for judo flying from Japan, mm -hmm. being flown from Japan to, to Brazil. So, so Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, to me, I look at it's really kind of advanced the grappling world because they've opened the door to many other various techniques and systems to integrate into yes. the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Yes, and, and you, you, see it, you see it in MMA, you know, even, even wrestlers that, that have um, wrestled all their lives have to learn Jiu-Jitsu now. They have to. And we saw it this weekend with Justin Gage again getting choked out by 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 uh, Oliveira, a, a jiu-jitsu practitioner, uh, choking out a wrestler. It, it you have to practice it. You have to understand your ground game. Every every fight starts standing up, but mm -hmm. at some point 
it could there's 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 a 50 50 chance that it's going to reach the ground so. right now when i first learned kodokan myself it's like we didn't really do anything from the waist down in traditional judo when it comes to locking mm -hmm. i learned a knee bar yep was it kind of like that you guys you didn't have much of a from the waist down negative yeah. Exactly. So it was in Jiu Jitsu when it began, it was the same. They didn't really have from the waist down all these knee bars and ankle locks. And Correct. Those, these things. Correct. It, 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 I, I, I couldn't pinpoint when it started uh, evolving to that. It's, it's, it was more of a shoot, uh, uh, shooto, shooto and, mm -hmm. and, 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 and what Paulson practices. Um, catch wrestling, catch wrestling. All, all these guys. Leg locks are, are part of their daily meal mm -hmm. <laughs> you know they eat they eat ankle locks they eat toe holds it's mm -hmm. it's it's what they what how they feed themselves and unfortunately Jew and Jiu Jitsu didn't do this it, and Jew still doesn't mm -hmm. um, traditionally they still don't they still don't it's right. there's I forget now it escapes the name but uh, 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 there's a there's a judo uh, system that is very similar to catch and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu I'll come back to you with that. Name. Okay. It's very interesting. Let's, let's build the next thing. So, as far as keeping in shape, and I know I know me personally is when I go to the gym, work out, run, stretch. It's always how I uh, train. That I'm training for martial arts, not that I'm getting in shape to get in shape. I get in shape for what I do in martial arts. Correct. So, when you get yourself in shape, is, is that same aspect with you? You think about how you're going to apply it to say martial arts? Absolutely. I, uh, I when I started lifting weights, I was I was 15 years old. Super skinny. I, I say that I had uh, uh, dish soap here because you could put a, di a a soap bar here and another one here. How skinny I was. Um, my goal was to gain weight and get stronger. But as I started understanding the benefits and, and learning about lifting, of course, and I started understanding the benefits of getting stronger and lifting and how it could be applied into the martial arts and the sports, all the sports and, and, and arts that I was practicing. I started looking for ways that that I could use that to make my 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 sport better not necessarily getting bigger and shredded and, and you know so what, so what did you do so what is your usual routine you did to keep you in martial arts shape um I like to build myself from the bottom up right so legs back shoulders and then the rest right um, those are those are the of course grip grip strength is is, is essential no matter what you do mm -hmm. um, I, I like I like squats I like deadlifts I like cleans um, uh, high high rep cleans uh, speed explosiveness I like pull ups I like a lot of rows um, um, uh, sled pushes things that get my cardio going while I'm while I'm uh, building strength and endurance. Um, so, so as far as endurance, what did you? I like swimming. Since I moved to to Houston, it's mm -hmm. not easy to find somewhere. I, I don't like pools all that much. Um, so um, you got the bayou over there, <clears throat> the sewage, yeah. the sewage <laughs> system of Houston. Yeah, I you like Houston. Swim for your life if you swim. <laughs> Man, if I can't see my feet, I hardly. I, I think I'll, I'll get in there. Yeah. Um, so so you a lot of lifting to get strength in your your core, yes. your legs. Yes. Um, what about flexibility? As as so stretching? yoga and, and of course in yoga. after after every after every session I like uh, of, of training I like to stretch minimum five minutes I have I have a, a few basic movements again from the bottom up you know uh, work your calves your ankles your your thighs your your hamstrings. So your workout is a daily routine for you. In one way or another, I'm always. Active and you always change your routine, probably doing things differently with the body. Yes, nothing, nothing is is. I go, I follow a lot of what my body tells me, I, and that's come with time, you know. Before listening to the body, very important. Yes, core, right? yes. When I started lifting, I, I used to have like Monday's chest, uh, uh, Tuesday's legs, and that right. kind of thing. But right. as as I've grown older and understand mm -hmm. my body and 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 understand exercise and, and martial arts, I I've I've learned to go with what my body feels mm -hmm. is needed that day. Okay. You know? So so this is something that kind of breaks the mold of the past. The past was just like you said, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, this, yeah. Tuesday, Thursday. Yeah. And I did the same. And I think as, as a martial artist, you learn to listen to your body more. And it's very important when he's telling you mm -hmm. guys because when you have a routine, 
make sure you, you adapt your routine. Be intuitive enough to know that, you know, my shoulder's tight today, so let's not do the shoulder. Let's more let's just stretch the shoulder out these days. And let's go with what my body feels. And, and I think when you always change and make your body adaptable is how the body learns to grow. It learns, it learns to adapt as well as we age. Because, guys, if you're a young martial artist, you can abuse your body all day long. Hmm. But as you get older, you get closer to the 40, the 50, mark 60, you have to be more smart how you handle your exercises, your stretching, your running. As we say, your yang routine is more of your intense workout and yin's more of your soft. He mentioned yoga, where I like yoga, but also a little tai chi and qi gong as well. But what I want to uh, talk about now is the, how does he prepare himself for the mental aspect of martial arts? What do you, what do you think you've learned from the, from the mental side that helps you better in the world around us today? You know, we, we've gotten in this uh, system of rat race, right? So we all work, 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 and, and us martial artists have the benefit of having that escape. Mm -hmm. Because of how martial arts have evolved, and majority of them into a sport, we, a lot of us don't see the, the, the mental preparation in going into um, uh, the dojo, the, the, the training session, right? we go from work straight into the mats and there's really very little transition. It, 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 we go through the motions a lot. So again, as I've gotten older, mm -hmm. I've, I've gone back uh, to trying to apply that, that silence before I get to training. Um, very important. No, no, f I try to avoid the phone on my way in. I try to avoid um, so what you're saying you're younger, it's like loud music on the way to the dojo? Yeah, you gotta, you gotta get hyped, you gotta get ready for it. silence the dojo? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and, Very important, guys. Yeah. When you're 19, you play the loudest music you can. <laughs> when you get a little older, you have silence in your mind. Yeah, you, you uh, kind of try to leave leave work and the rest of the life out. And, 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 and well, probably because of the response. I, I think like this, when you're younger, you don't have a lot of responsibilities. And as we get older, Very true. you have your own business, mm -hmm. you have your family, you have all these other obligations. And so you don't have a lot of silence in your mind. So yes. before, right before going to the school, it's very important to have like that meditative clearing the mind moment. Yes. And that's probably what, what you're speaking of. And very important, guys. Think about this, if you're blaring your music for you to school, you probably don't have a whole lot of responsibilities and you're probably like 19. <laughs> so when you go, the old days, the old traditional days, they meditate before they train. Before they train, not afterwards. Yeah. So so like Luis is saying, when I go to the school now, I turn my radio off. I sit in the car and I sit in silence. And I just try to just clear and dump everything out of my brain that's been going on during the day. Everything about work and my life and putting it all to the side. So I just have a clear mind. I don't always think about even what I'm gonna do before I get there. I just clear it all. And then when you walk in, you walk in with a clean sheet of paper. Okay? That's yes. kind of where you're talking about, right? Yes, sir. So let's move on, guys. Now, I wanna move on to an important aspect of the show today. And for all you watching the show, this is not just about martial art fitness, it's also about when something happens in your life that's very traumatic, how do you overcome it? And Luis has a, has a really good story for you guys to share with you. Uh, I've, I've known this man for a long time. I've gone through my own traumas. And when you go through a trauma, and you go through it so dramatically that your body does not function like it used to, it takes a lot to overcome it. And so I'd like him to share what happened to him with you guys. Okay. January 17th, 2021. Um, I was riding my motorcycle. Kids. <laughs> Love motorcycles still. But... Um, riding motorcycle on a Sunday afternoon here in Houston and um, they're not very far from your house right no no less maybe a mile and a half to be bad estimated <laughs> um, a gentleman run a stop sign and clicked me on the right mm -hmm. and destroyed my right leg um, I flew about I don't know uh, 30 meters and uh, landed on my shoulder, dislocated my shoulder, tore uh, three ligaments on my shoulder. Uh, on the leg, I uh, broke my femur just right below the, uh, the head of the femur. I shattered my right tibia and my right foot was out of, I think we have 32 bones on the foot. I have 30, uh, 13. They barely, they barely saved your foot, right? Yes, sir. 
I had 13 fractures. It was, imagine a, a bag of potato chips and you just <laughs> smash it and then you open it. That was my foot. Um, so 16 months later, here we are. I how, how many surgeries? 10 surgeries. 10 surgeries. Mm -hmm. 10 surgeries. Um, I'm still limping. Uh, my foot it needs, needs more work and uh, my shoulder is working fine. Uh, it's getting strength and, and mobility again. Uh, a lot of therapy, a lot of work, a lot of strengthening. Um, the foot is still the issue. Uh, I, I limp, my, my toes don't bend still, my ankle has very little mobility. Um, the femur every now and then, you know, if I try to do a, a side lunge, uh, it, it, I, can, I can feel it, but, you know. Not yet. Not yet, it's not, not yet. Really, yeah, but I had my first Jiu Jitsu session this past Saturday. Um, felt amazing. So it's first course. class today, guys, it's, uh, it's it's May uh, it's 8th today? Today's the 9th. 9th? I think, yeah. 9th today? Yeah. Uh, 2022, and he's back on the mats. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, and, and I was like a little puppy with the tail like, getting excited when he's going out for a ride. Uh, it felt great, of course. Mm -hmm. I, I, I felt several limitations, but, you know, time. You're back on the mat, so. Yes, I'm point. back. So let's think about this guy. So this man basically take his body and divide it in half, and everything was kind of broken all the way down. It's like he, he was the yin and yang of himself. So he's been putting all the pieces back together and broken. He's had a lot of good surgeries he's had done himself. I've watched him go from step one to step two. And, um, and here he is walking without a cane, without a walker. And many people, once they get a, a trauma like this, they're done for life. A lot of people are in a wheelchair. But yet the martial art aspect of him is just that, that willingness and eagerness to never give up. And yet here he is back on the mats after just a, such a short time. So how is how is your routine now as far as how you rehab yourself, how you work out now compared to what you used to do? Tell us a little bit about that. So there's a lot of stretching involved. Um, a lot of, I gotta reteach my foot how to balance on itself. There's, there's so many uh, screws and bolts and, uh, and, and, and that foot, that the mobility, and it's it's not quite there. So, um, when you when you plant your foot naturally, it spreads and it allows for that push when you're moving forward or even backwards. My foot is stiff, right? So I have to. I, I don't have a lot of balance yet on that foot, so I'm working on that, stretching, strengthening. Mm -hmm. Some uh, I'm doing a lot of high rep. Uh, weights, a lot of kettlebell work, um, uh, mobility and, and, and explosiveness, how a lot of cables, a lot of dumbbell uh, and kettlebell pulls, pushes. What, what about internal? Are you doing more cleansing and detoxing? So I'm getting into that. Class? I was in Puerto Rico for 11 months, so <laughs> cleansing wasn't all that available. Um, we, our, our diet isn't the most healthy. Uh, the, the healthiest diet there is, but um, uh, I'm here, mm -hmm. and we we're gonna work on that together. And so what you're saying is now we're gonna do some more cleansing and detox. Yes, sir. So the idea, guys, is to is to retox and then detox. <laughs> that's not the idea, but that's what happened. <laughs> so so one one thing about this, when you have a surgery, especially many surgery, you have a lot of anesthesia, a lot of chemicals in your body. A lot. And so this is really where he is now, and, and I can't tell the audience enough who are watching. When you cleanse your colon, you have to do it over and over. When you want to get the chemicals out of your body, and this is where he is, the liver and gallbladder system has to be flushed over and over again. And that way his lymphatic system can detoxify itself, his whole vascular system can function better. But, but I'm quite amazed where he is now, but now he's just moving into the next stage. And that next stage is learning to do stuff with your body that you've never done before. Yeah. And this is the area where you are right now. It's a new body and uh, new challenges for sure. So tell us how, when you woke up, and here you are laying there broken in pieces, how, do you, how did the martial arts help you mentally to get through this? How'd you just not give up? How'd you just not get depressed and let this let let the world go? That's that's very funny. I know that's it, a, that's it, a tough place. It, it was so I, I landed face down. Uh, my helmet had no scratches. Um, the rest of my body had it, had them all, but there was not a scratch on that helmet. And my body, who's a judoka, says like that was judo that saved your head. And I'm like, 
yeah, you know, I, you, you broke fall, and, and I, I don't know, because my body shut down on that hit. But I landed face down, hands in here, and stretched. When I'm trying to l turn so that I could face the sky, because I'm looking at, the, uh, at a gutter, literally, I felt my, my hip, and I figured it was kind of stuck, and I'm like, oh, okay, that's, you know, that, that's the injury. And when I'm turning, I see the foot, and the foot is turned, and there's the boot, there's a boot, and the foot is twisted, and I'm like, all right, I'm not making class on Monday. <laughs> I so your first thought you're this martial art class, right? I'm missing, I'm missing class on Monday. All right. Um, so that was determined that you're missing class at this point? Yes, all I right. just didn't know how many classes I was going to miss, and uh, when I get when the paramedics show up and they, they cut open my jeans and the boot and the, and, and the sock and I see my foot and I ask the guy, I remember his name, Zach, mm -hmm. paramedic, and I ask him, how bad is it? And he says, like, I hadn't seen anything this bad in my foot. And I'm like, all right, definitely nice. It's not just not, not, not which one there. No. That was that moment. No. And um, when I get to the ER, I ask the, the, the medic, the, the, the doctor, and he says, yeah, in three months you're going to be walking. And I'm like, really? That's what he said. How but, about that? Um, it wasn't three months. <laughs> <laughs> but once you, I mean, once you realize when you're like out of the hospital even and you're home, <clears> and you realize, <throat> okay, I'm not going to move like I used to for a while. Mentally, that was tough. Men, that's the toughest place I find is that after, was tough. after the trauma. How did the martial arts really help you at that point? Because because I know you're in your mind fighting fighting the negative thoughts over those positive thoughts, right? How did um, it help you there? Not, not, not to quote um, um, uh, this guy, uh, The Rock, but he has one thing that, that I admire, and he says that his workouts in the morning are his anchors, right? That's his anchor. He wakes up and he works out, and then he can go on about his day. Mm -hmm. To us martial artists, to most of us martial artists, um, we, we go about the day so that we can get to class later, That's, we, so that we can do what we love, not what we must, right? Laying there without being able to get out of the bed, um, all I thought was, when will I be able to train again and how? How much of it will I be able to do? The more surgeries I went through, the harder it became to, to keep that thought alive. And, and, and many, 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 many nights, I, I, I thought it was over, right? And, as time goes by, the body heals and, 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 and your mind starts getting stronger with, with, with people around you that help you uh, uh, stay uh, uh, aligned and, and not deviate to, to the darker side of, of, of your thoughts, which is very easy to do. Um, very easy just to give up, right? Just yeah, to say, okay, yeah. I'm you, done. And, and when, when you find yourself weak, when you've never been, when you find yourself uh, without the, the ability to move when you always moved and, and to a higher level of movement, it's challenging. It's very difficult to, to see that light at the end of the tunnel, but... But something, something kept you going, something inside, right? The want, the need to get back on the mat and do what I love and do what makes me feel alive. Martial arts, whether it be judo, jiu-jitsu, anything is is what keeps me going to the gym and lifting weights so that I can I can get back and put on my gi and go on the mat. So, so guys, this is a, those of you out there who are going through some kind of a injury or trauma, <clears throat> or something's happened to you. This man sitting here today, I tell you, you can do it. You can make it through it. Whatever the worst has happened to you, there's still a part of your body that can function. And I myself can tell you, as I damaged my back years ago and lost use of my legs, I could not move my legs for a while, I was so excited when I could do one thing. I could pick up a sword and draw a sword. And so I began my sword training again. I couldn't do karate, I couldn't do judo, I couldn't do none of my other arts. But when you find that one thing you can do, that's what gives you that kind of hope, that kind of inspiration that you can go back to where you were. It just you have to go back differently. And this is where Luis is now. He's finding out as you learn to adapt that routine, what you can and can't do. And then you just focus on what you can do. Right? Yep. Yeah. So remember, all of you out there, don't ever give up where you are. 
I watched a man lose his legs to diabetes, a karate man. He started doing karate with his hands out of a wheelchair. He never gave up. So never give up, guys. So I want to move the, we'll get towards the end of the show, guys, and I, I thank you for sharing that with us. This is the first time these guys shared this, and probably to anybody, so it's, it's brave today to be on live film with you guys, and I appreciate him for doing that. Uh, sure. But I want to ask you, where do you see the future of martial arts going? Now, all the stuff you've been through, all the training you've done, all the people you've met, where do you see the future of it going at this point? Well, you can, you can see where, where all this is moving. You can see it in Julia, you can see it, you see it in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. All these arts started as traditional uh, self-defense mechanisms and, and, and systems. Um, I think sports um, have allowed for all these martial arts, the, the, the sport aspect of many martial arts have, have, have al has, has allowed for martial arts to reach further deep into communities uh, around the world, mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm I'm not mad about it. I think if I rather have a a, a, a sport judoka than a, not a judoka at all. So if it's through sports that you that that you learn about a martial art, so be it. I think the more the merrier, the better people will have. Uh, martial arts is something that teaches you respect, teach you about, teaches you about. So maybe back into the, even the school system again, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I really think today, I mean, like you said, judo back into the school it once was a lot of places. In fact, Japan it was part of their, their it's, system. It's still taught in in, in so the police academy. I think today having a martial arts is some aspect part of the school system is extremely important for the discipline and respect that we learned in the martial mm -hmm. arts to bring it back to the schools because you see a lot of that. And kids today, they don't have that respect. They don't have that discipline. And video games don't teach you that, right? So where would you like to see things go in the future? If you, if you had your wand out here and could wave the, the wand, where would you like to see the martial arts industry go, even the different arts? What would you like to see happen? I would like the state, whichever, I'm not talking about the United States or Puerto Rico, I'm talking about worldwide, states get, give more funding for martial arts, for for kids that can't afford to pay for school, states should, could help kids learn something and become better people. Like and, Chuck Norris said that after school program for a while, he had for a lot of kids, right? Mm -hmm. So the states, so our federal funding could have, mm -hmm. and not necessarily they have to go and be a competitive student, but maybe every student who just wants to learn martial arts, yes. the school would be able to offer that or a, a federal program to offer the martial arts <coughs> to people who can afford it. And, and really, to get their mind, their body, to get them where they want to be, no matter where they are, or, or those of you watching this, you have kids, is get you involved in a martial arts school. And, and one thing I like about the future is things are going and they're exposing a lot of the arts, which is good. People get in a sense of what's all out there but also helping to keep the traditional ways. I don't like that we are losing a lot of our traditional ways. I like to see schools and those instructors that may be watching this, if you have a traditional way that worked for you, keep it in your system. Keep the bowing. Keep the showing respect before and during training. Have some kind of formality that keeps your student disciplined, humble, the way it was first taught. And I think if we lose that in our martial arts circles, we lose that kind of foundation of, the, of where martial arts began, we'll lose who we are and it simply become just another sport like baseball or basketball. Mm -hmm. And so that's one aspect I hope we, we keep some tradition in our schools, which I know you've been trained traditionally and I have, and we still keep it in our schools. Not as strict as when I was brought up, mm -hmm. but keeping it enough for the students to learn. When they walk in that school, they respect the school, they respect the mats, they respect each other. And like you said before, you see it off the mats. You can always tell someone, outside their school who was trained traditionally who was not by the type of respect they show. Yeah. And especially you never see a traditional guy cursing. They don't see them cursing or doing, or doing a lot of crazy things off the mats as well. So guys, if you, if you have a school and you're watching this video, please keep some type of tradition in your school to help your students, help them find a way and keep them in the dojo in a very disciplined way because Look at all the single families, mothers raising their kids these days. A lot of that's happening and they don't have a male influence. 
So I'd like to wrap up the show today. Um, any closing remarks for the, the people watching? Because it's not just martial arts. We have all kind of folks be watching the show today. What is any kind of closing remarks you think people need to learn out of what you've been through recently? I think just take care of yourselves. Take care of your bodies. Um, you don't, cliche, you don't know what you have until it's gone. If you're still healthy, the only way you, it's not about living a long life. It's about living the life you got the best way possible. The, the, the healthier you live, the happier you'll be. So eat well, stay healthy, and, and share that with the people around you. Excellent. Okay, guys. So thank you for watching the show today. We had Luis Perez today, martial artist, the unknown, famous Luis Perez, a very <laughs> humble guy. But today I had, to, we actually talked about this film a long time ago, pre-trauma. And so anyhow, it just kind of worked out that after it's post-trauma, he had a lot more to talk about today, a lot more experiences he had to bring to you guys. So guys, keep watching for the next show. I've got many good guests coming up. And uh, every month, there's going to be a, a host of people we have on the show, from doctors to, to people in the esoteric fields to martial artists. We've got a whole list of people coming. So stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. And I'm Dr. Patrick Price, the Body Detective.